Hola. <laughs> we good? <laughs> okay. Okay, can everybody hear me okay? Yes? The translator is working? Yes? Okay. So my name is Gabe. For those of you who don't know me, that's a nickname. That's what my friends call me. That's what I ask you to call me. So I came here from Florida. It was really an adventure coming here. I don't know if you're following the news, but we had a major hurricane in Florida. And it was coming across the Bahamas, and it messed up all of the air travel. So my flight was delayed for two days, and I was trying to get here because I wanted to come to campus party. It's an amazing place, and I always have so much fun here. So for the last two months, uh, I've been in Brazil. Uh, I was in uh, Pia Porta. I was in Montes Claros. I was in Natal, and I was in uh, Belo Horizonte. Then I went to Australia. I was in Australia for two weeks. I was back in America for two days, and I came here. So I came Wednesday night from America. I flew all night long, no sleep. Thursday I went to school, yesterday I went to schools, and tonight I'm here, and it's wonderful. I really, really enjoy being here, and I really like to talk to you a lot about the space program. We talk about a space shuttle, why we had a space shuttle, what its mission was. We talk about astronauts up on the space station and what they do. And we also talk about rovers on Mars and how they're exploring Mars and the future of the space program, which involves astronauts going to Mars. Now, maybe some of you will have this opportunity, or some of your kids will have this opportunity. If it's something you think you'd like to do, I always encourage you to do that. But one of the things I like to talk to you about, we hear in America all the time. They say, if you want to be successful, you have to work hard. You must work hard no matter what you do. I don't care what it is. Work hard, work hard. That's all they talk to you about and talk about stress, and they talk about pressure, and how difficult life can be. But I want to say to all of you something I want you to know. I'm going to tell you how you never have to work, and nothing ever has to be hard, and you, how you can have a life with no stress and no pressure, only fun. Your life should be fun. I don't care where you are in your life. I don't care what you're doing up to this point. From this point forward, your life can be fun, and it's not difficult. And I'm going to share with you how to do that. But before we start, I always like to tell everybody a little bit about me, because I want you to know I hated school. I did terrible in school. I failed everything I ever took. I loved the beach. I love being on the beach, and I love playing sports. So when I was a little kid, I was on the beach playing sports, and they dragged me off the beach, and they put me in a box, and they said, read, and it was very, very difficult. And I failed almost everything I did. To make it worse, I have a twin sister who loves school. So when you have a twin, you're always compared. So she was always the good twin. I was the bad twin. She was the twin who never got in trouble. I was the twin who always got in trouble. She was the smart twin. I was the not-so-smart twin. She was the twin who never gave her parents problems. I was the twin who always gave my parents problems. And my parents would say to me, why can't you be like your sister? She never gives us any trouble. And my sister, for some reason, when she was five years old, she knew she wanted to be a teacher. So she loved school because she knew it was taking her to be a teacher. And when they used to say to me, why can't you be like your sister? My mind, I would think, she wants to be a teacher. I hate school. Why do I want to be like her? It didn't make any sense, but I understood. So I struggled in school really, really bad. When I went to high school, I went to high school just for one reason, to play sports. We have great sports programs in America. So I went to high school to play sports. So for four years, I did just enough studying so I could play sports. And it was great. I really enjoyed playing sports in high school, but I didn't learn anything. At the end of four years, I said, I'm done. I'm never going back to school again. There isn't enough money in the world to drag me back. I'm finished. I'm happy. 
My first job after high school was working at McDonald's. We call it Mickey D's. So I was flipping burgers, making fries. It was awesome. No homework, no tests, hanging out with my friends. I said, I found what I want to do. I'm good, but I like to race cars. So no matter how many burgers I flipped or fries I made, I couldn't generate the income to race cars. So for 12 years, I tried many different things. I drove a bus, I drove a truck, I was a mechanic, anything I could to try to generate income for 12 years. And after 12 years, I realized I've got to go to university if I want to generate the income to race cars. So I went to school eight years at night and I finished my university. So 20 years after I finished high school, I finished university. It was the best thing I ever did. And when I come to schools, and one of the best things about Campus Party, Campus Party brings me to Brazil. It allows me to speak to you, but it also gives me opportunity to go to schools all around your city and speak to kids. And I've been doing that the last two days. And I love to talk to the kids about the opportunities and how important it is to get to university. And I tell them, look, if I can do it, so can you. And something I realized during those 12 years, I used to think you had to be so smart to go to university. But during those 12 years, people who'd been to university would say to me, hey Gabe, how do you do this? Or how do you do that? And I thought, well, you've been to university, why are you asking me? And I realized they're not so smart. If they can do it, so can I. So for any of you in the audience who think you'd like to go to university, I really encourage you to do that. You don't have to be super smart. You just have to be determined, and you can do anything you want. Now, I really love coming to Brazil. I'm a structural civil engineer contractor for NASA at Kennedy Space Center in Florida, right on the beach. I love being on the beach. I'm on the beach every chance I can. As a contractor for NASA, it's a magical situation. People say, what's it like to be at NASA? I say, it's magic. Every day you have ships going into space. They are building uh, vehicles to go to different planets. Every room you go in has a picture. Everywhere you go, it's fantastic. It's just a magical, magical environment. And when I come to Brazil, I'd say to all of the people in Brazil, this is my 14th time coming to Brazil, and I really enjoy it. And I travel all over the world doing this. But what I found out about the people in Brazil, and I mean this sincerely, of all the places I go, the people in Brazil, you have the kindest hearts in all of the world. You are so friendly, you are so nice to me, I am so thankful for all that you do to do that. And I really appreciate coming here. So when they say to me, what's it like to be at, Na at NASA? What's it like to be at Kennedy Space Center? And I say, it's so much fun. Every day when you go in, you see something magical happen. And I want to tell you a little bit about what it's like to be at a space center. We have different space centers around America. Kennedy Space Center is in Florida, where they launch the astronauts into space. We have many different ones. There's another space center in Florida called Johnson Space Center. It's in Houston, Texas. That's where the astronauts actually live and work. So I have a little video to show you what it's like to go to work at a space center in Houston. You might have to start it. NASA Johnson Star Johnson Star Welcome to NASA's Johnson Space Center We are coming in hot So don't burn up as we enter We do science every day That affects your daily life Throw them up for manned space flight Science everywhere as we engineer the marbles that fly through the air And take us way beyond Earth's level science everywhere Because we engineer the marbles that fly through the air Flies us through the air Control the mission Out of Johnson This is ground This is space Tell me Houston What's the problem? It's okay Oh it's okay Because the flight controllers all in job today NASA Johnson Star Johnson Star NASA, 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 NASA.
the Johnson Star. Johnson Star. F, F, F. That's the Johnson Star. Hey, That's the Johnson Star. It's amazing. That's the Johnson Star. Orbiting Earth, International Space Station, where we work and live in space with a crew from several nations. Got Japanese and Russians and that European charm. Throw them up like the Canada arm. Checking out research. 29k cubic feet revolves around the Earth. Science microgravity revolves around the Earth. Columbus jamming destiny, kicking out research, kicking out research. Train the astro, that's it, Johnson, to go to space, to go to space. Cause the missions of tomorrow start today. We start today. As we engineer the future day. NASA Johnson Star Johnson Star F F F F NASA Johnson Star Johnson Star F F F NASA Johnson Star Science F F F F NASA Johnson Star It's amazing F F F F Flying more SLS and PCV, we cannot feel the floor. Cause the lack of gravity, the destinations are an asteroid, Mars, or the moon. We are blasting off, start the countdown soon. Six, five, four, three, two, one. The Johnson Star. Hey, it's amazing. F, 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 NASA Johnson Star. <laughs> so that's what it's like. <laughs> it's always so much fun. And, and I'm really privileged to be there. And I said, I came from McDonald's to NASA. It's been an amazing trip but it's so much fun. I want you to think about three things, and I'll explain these things more. Something you want you to do every day. I don't care the day of the week. I don't care what you do. Just these three simple things. Do your best, enjoy what you do, and believe in yourself. These are the keys to a happy life, and they're all mental and all within our control. And I'll prove to you how you can do this and how you can have a happy life. So the first thing we talk about is something called STEM. Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And STEM came about for a very interesting reason. Kids in America were not doing well in math and science. And internationally, kids were doing much better. So kids would come from internationally and take the good jobs. American kids couldn't compete. So the US government said, let's develop STEM. So now STEM is all over the world, which is a pretty good thing. So a little movie about STEM. It will show you some of the fun things you can do if you're good at math and science. Might have to start it. Okay. Ever think you could help invent artificial intelligence? Or design the tools used to perform research on Mars? How about finding the cure for cancer or helping to develop a green fuel? Before you say no, think again. Think STEM. STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Studying STEM opens you to a wide range of hands-on, cutting-edge careers and can create amazing opportunities. From designing rockets, to building robots, to writing the computer programs that will change the way we work and live, you can help shape the future of our world. Are you ready for the challenge? Then let's get started. Well, that's just some of the fun things available if you're good in math and science. We also have something called STEAM that has an A in it. Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Mathematics. And it's really important for me that we bring arts into math and science because with artists, they look at everything and they, they make things so much better. This is a very good friend of mine. 
Her name is Tina. Tina's a professional dancer. When I was going to school studying math and science, she was going to Juilliard School of Dance in New York City and studying to become a dancer. And she taught me about STEAM. She said, Gabe, when I study arts, I have to learn these 10 things. I have to learn to be creative, to build confidence, to solve problems. All of these 10 things I do in arts, it's the same thing you do in math and science. So in a lot of ways, they're interchangeable. Many people are good at both. It's just where their interest is that they choose to do. This is one of my favorite pictures in the space program. I'm an engineer, civil structural type of engineer. I'm not really into astronomy, but because I'm around so many kids who love astronomy, I've gotten to know a little bit more about the stars. And if you look up at the sky at night, if it was completely black on Earth, you would see all those billions of stars above us every single night. They're there. The only reason we don't see them is the light from the Earth filters them out. But I think that's amazing. When I first saw that picture, I thought it was Photoshopped. I didn't believe it. But it's actually a real picture. We had shuttle launches. The sh well, the main reason we had a space shuttle was the only thing large enough and powerful enough to bring the big pieces to space to build the International Space Station. We had day launches and we had night launches. And the night launches were amazing. Because the night launches, it would be black at night, and when this took off, it would literally turn to daylight. The engine was so powerful and so large, it made nighttime turn into daytime. And I don't, I'm gonna see if I can't get this thing going. At the beginning of the countdown, the moon, it was down on the horizon, it was down here, it was a big orange ball. It almost looked like the sun. And as the countdown progressed, the moon rose and it went right in. I remember this launch vividly because of that picture. This is a really rare picture because there's two shuttles on a launch pad. There's one there and one there. The main reason we had a space shuttle was to build the International Space Station. The astronauts would get in the shuttle, they would go up into space, they would put on a spacesuit, they would go outside, and they would build a space station. If there was a problem, they could go inside the space station for safety. If there was something life-threatening or something they thought that might cause them harm, they could go inside the space station. But this mission was going to the Hubble telescope. The Hubble telescope's a large telescope up in space. It's about the size of a bus, and it's studying the universe. And this was a repair mission. There was a concern if they went up to the Hubble and there was a life-threatening situation, there was no safe place for them to go. They thought they might die in space. So they had a second one on a launch pad as a rescue mission, just in case it was necessary. It wasn't, but it was the only time in the history of the space program they had two active shuttles on a launch pad. Same picture at night. These things are lit up brilliantly at night. They've got these huge spotlights on them. You can see them for about 30 kilometers away. I'm always on the beach. Every chance I can, I'm on the beach. And you can be on the beach, walking along the beach, and see them from the beach. Or you can get in a boat, and you can drive in the water and see them. Or you can even drive on the highway past the Space Center. You can see them for about 30 kilometers away. And they're beautiful at night. This is called the VAB, the Vehicle Assembly Building. And what that means, anything that goes into space is called the vehicle. And inside the VAB, it's put together or assembled. That's why it's called the VAB. And everything, all of the Apollo missions, when the astronauts went to the moon, all of those missions were assembled inside that VAB, and then they were brought to the launch pad. I do race cars for hobby. Uh, that's one of the cool cars I race. I love convertibles because I'm always in the sunshine. People are saying it's too hot here, but I love it. I just came from Australia. In Australia, it was like three degrees. I was freezing, and now I'm here. It feels so comfortable. Probably most of you are cooking, but I really love the heat, and I'm always in the sunshine, and that's a fun car. I love to drive back and forth to work with the top down catching some rays. This is what it looks like going to the launch pad. Now, the VAB, the Vehicle Assembly Building, where it's put together is right here. And it has to go from here to a launch pad. That's five kilometers away. And it gets there on this. This down here, I don't know if you can see. This is a little person. It gives you an idea how big that is. The bottom is called a crawler transporter. This part is a crawler transporter. This is a mobile launch platform. And the shuttle has four main parts. The part that looks like a plane is called an orbiter because it goes up in space and it orbits the Earth. 
The part in the middle is a fuel tank, like on your car, but it has liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. And it's got two solid rocket motor boosters together. And that's how, how it looks like going out to the launch pad. It takes five hours to go from here to the launch pad. And it goes very slow. They stop, they check everything, make sure it's okay, and we'll go again. And that's why it's called a crawler transporter, because it crawls out there very slowly. This is what it looks like at launch. Now I want to show you a launch and I want to tell you what it's like to feel a launch because it's the most amazing thing I've ever experienced. I've been at Kennedy Space Center about 17 years and I've watched every single launch I can. Daytime, nighttime, I don't care. I love these launches because there's something super spectacular about them. In the orbiter, there's three engines and the two solid rocket boosters. Combined, it's three million kilos pushing against the Earth. So this thing is on a launch pad and it's trying to take off as three million kilos of lift trying to get it off the Earth. So what happens is, I know most of you have flown in a plane. When you're in a plane, you get in a plane at a passenger terminal. It goes on a taxiway to a runway. And at the runway, it stops. And you hear them revving up the engines and they have the brakes on so it can't move until they get enough power and then it takes off horizontally. Well, this does the same thing, but it's trying to take off vertically. It's clamped down on the launch pad, and they start the engines to build up power. And when they're trying to build up power, it's trying to take off, but it's locked down, and it literally shakes the earth. So you're standing there, you're watching this thing. Now you're five kilometers away. On the launch, on the Space Center, we're five kilometers, which is really close. The general public is about 50 kilometers. So we're 10 times closer than the general public. At five kilometers, you still really can't see it. It's very small, and you really can't hear it, but you feel it. You feel a vibration in your feet. All of a sudden, your feet start shaking, your body is shaking. You don't see it, you don't hear it, but you feel it, and it's magic. And what else happens? All of the cars on the Space Center, they feel it too, and they think somebody's breaking in. So all the alarms are going off. The horns are honking, the lights are flashing, the alarms are going off. You've got all this crazy sensation around you, and you see this thing take off. And it looks like it's going super, super slow. Then all of a sudden, it's just gone. So I want to show you about a launch and tell you the little things. First thing you're going to see at the launch, at the bottom of the orbiter, there's something called igniters. Let's see. I can't get this thing to work. Right at the bottom, there's little sparks. What happens inside that tank is liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. Oxygen and hydrogen are two gases in our atmosphere. They make them super cold and they become a liquid. And they're inside that. And they sit in the hot Florida sun and they expand and out the top. So they don't want those fumes orbiter to take off. They might go up in flames. So the first thing they do, they burn off any vented fumes. The second thing you're going to see, it looks like smoke. It's steam. They put three million liters of water on the launch pad for heat and noise suppression. You might have to start it. Okay. So the first thing you'll see is these igniters. They're burning off any vented fumes. And then you'll see the engine start, and it's trying to take off. And this is when the ground starts shaking. You really can't see it, you can't hear it, but you feel it. And that's the steam from the water. And it's just an awesome sensation. There's seven astronauts on that shuttle. First two minutes, they're bouncing around quite a bit. After two minutes, the boosters fall off. The boosters are held on with large bolts. They're about a meter long and 20 centimeters in diameter, and they blow them apart. That's what separates the boosters from the tank. Boosters fall off above the water, about 50 kilometers above the water, a parachute opens, they fall gently in the water, a ship goes out, picks them up, they're brought back to the space center, they're clean and reused. Then the tank and the orbiter go up in orbit, the tank falls off and burns up in the atmosphere. 
If you can imagine, it only takes eight and a half minutes to go from the launch pad into space. If you could think how fast that is going. You're sitting on a shuttle on a pad, eight and a half minutes later, you're in space. Oops. Oops. Who's that? It's Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> Buzz Lightyear was, remember everything about the space program is fun. I hope you all will have fun out here today. I have fun doing this. I want you to have fun sharing it with me. And Buzz Lightyear was brought in the space program to make it fun for kids, to get them more interested in the space program. Now, Buzz, Ast Buzz uh, Lightyear is named after a very famous astronaut, Buzz Aldrin, who was the second person to walk on the moon. And I was on the beach. I'm always on the beach. I was on the beach about a year ago, and somebody said to me, hey, Gabe, do you want to meet Buzz? And I said, Buzz who? They said, Buzz Aldrin. I said, the guy that was on the moon? They said, yes. I said, of course. So I got to hang out on the beach with Buzz Aldrin, one of only 12 people in the whole world who've been on the moon, and talked to him for about an hour, just like I'm talking to you. It was the most amazing thing to hear this guy who'd literally been on the moon talk about what it was like 50 years ago to go to the moon and talk about what they had to do and what they had to learn and what it was like to be on the moon. It was the most amazing thing I ever happened. Another reason I love the beach. Only good things happen on the beach. And that's Woody. Woody's at all the launches too again. Every time there's a launch, he waves, and when the astronauts come back, he's clapping. Anybody guess what this is? Yes, can somebody tell me? Hello? <laughs> Anybody home? Yes. Yes, what is it? Chaos. The sonic boom. Sound barrier, CC. Very good. Yes, breaking the sound barrier. <laughs> so to give you an idea how fast this thing is going, if you're on Earth and you have a rifle, a rifle is a very powerful gun. If you fire the bullet from the rifle, that bullet goes 3,000 kilometers per hour. I race cars, I would love to go 3,000 kilometers per hour. Never gonna happen. But when you're in a shuttle and you're going in orbit, you're going 27,000 kilometers per hour. You're going nine times faster than a rifle bullet. If you can imagine how fast that is to get that big ship through the atmosphere to get into space. This is called the Orbiter Processing Facility. Remember that part I told you it looks like a plane? It's actually called an orbiter. And I always like to talk to the girls. I don't want the guys to not to listen, but I always like to talk to the girls. It's very important for me because something magical about the space program with the shuttle program was many, many women engineers got involved in the space program. If you look back at the history of the space program when astronauts were going to the moon, there's not one woman anywhere, not one girl, it's all guys. But with the advent of the shuttle program, many, many women and engineers got involved in the space program. And when I'm going to schools, especially to schools with young girls, I always tell them, listen, you can do anything. Don't let anybody tell you as a girl you can't do something. If somebody tells us as a guy we can't do something, we don't care, we do it anyway. But sometimes girls listen. And I want girls to know you can do anything, anything in life you choose, as well as all of the guys. But again, especially more for younger girls, it's important, and for everybody to know you can do anything. So with the orbiter processing facility, every time the orbiter goes up into space, it comes back down, it's completely disassembled, everything is checked, and it's put back together. Within the space program, women now fly the orbiter, they navigate the orbiter, and they maintain an orbiter. They're an intricate part of the space program. So her, this is a girl. Her job is to put the engine back in the orbiter. So when it goes up in space, the engine comes back. It's completely assembled. It's put back together. It has to be put back in the orbiter. And she has a handheld controller. She's on a forklift, moves the forks up and down, side to side, in and out. And she has to guide that engine into the orbiter. If she hits the engine on the side of the orbiter, she could damage the engine, damage the orbiter, create millions of dollars worth of damage and delay the mission. It's critical she does it perfect. She takes her three hours for one engine. She never makes a mistake. She's excellent. And I want all the girls to know, if you're interested in the space program at all, 
you can do anything. And the same with the guys. There's many, many opportunities. And one of the best things about today, the space program is expanding all over the world. If you think it's something you'd like to do, you can find many, many jobs in many different countries. Also, there's many commercial. It's just not NASA. It's just not government agencies. And it's going to keep getting bigger and bigger. So I really encourage you, if it's something you think you'd like to do, you should do that. And I will help you tell you how you can do that. <coughs> so we live by the beach. I always talk about living by the beach. And the shuttle pads are by the beach. And actually, a little bit later on, I'm going to ask you all to come to the beach with me. We're going to go to Florida. We're going to hang out on the beach. And we're going to watch a launch because that's where we watch the launches. We're always on the beach. But being on the beach, we have these gorgeous sunrises over the water with the shuttle on a pad. It's super spectacular. This is the ISS, the International Space Station. Again, the main reason we had a space shuttle. It was the only thing large enough and powerful enough to bring the big pieces up to space to build a space station. It took 12 years to build a space station. That was five years. This is eight years, and this is how it looks now. It's completed. It was completed about seven years ago, and that's the reason the shuttle stopped flying. There wasn't something wrong with it. Its primary mission was to build a space station, and once the space station was completed, it stopped. Have any of you seen the space station go over your house here in Brazil? A few of you have. If you would like to see the space station go over your house, it's very simple to do. You don't need a telescope, you don't need binoculars, you can just go outside and see it. And the way you do that, you go to nasa.gov, nasa.gov, the NASA website. It will open a page. There'll be some drop downs. It will say ISS. You hit the drop down, it will say see the ISS. Or you can just Google see the ISS. It will ask you for your home address and your email. You give it that information. It will give you a 24-hour notice when it's coming over your house. And you can just go outside and see it. You don't need a telescope. You don't need binoculars. It's very visible. It looks like a bright star. But you know, when you see a star at night, you're not seeing the star. You're seeing the light from the star. And it's stationary. It's not moving. But with the ISS, it looks like a star, but you can see it for four or five minutes going across the sky. So if it's something you like to do, I encourage you. It's really pretty. I think if you see it once, you'll want to see it again. Whoops. <laughs> this gives you an idea how big it is. Now, this is an American football field, which is a lot larger than a Brazilian soccer field. And we had a campus party last year, I think it was, in a soccer field. And I remember being in this soccer field and looking at this huge soccer field and thinking, the ISS is bigger than the soccer field, and it's up in space. Every 90 minutes, it goes around the Earth one time. When the astronauts are up in space, they see the sunrise 16 times every day. And they're floating because they're above gravity. So this gives you an idea how big it is. On Earth, it will weigh almost 500,000 kilos. In space, it weighs nothing. There's 16 nations involved in building the ISS, and you see Brazil is one of them. And Brazilian Space Agency is growing. For those of you who don't know, about 13 years ago, the Brazilian Space Agency was very good, and it had a lot of promise. But they had a serious accident, and people were killed, and the Space Agency kind of stopped. But within the last six months or so, it's really started to pick up again. And I always encourage you to try to get involved in the Brazilian Space Agency. Try to get your space agents. So many people want to come to America. So many people want to come to NASA. And that's fine. I don't discourage you from doing that. I encourage you to do that. But one of the greatest ways to do that would be to get with the Brazilian Space Agency, get some experience, get some knowledge, and then use it as a stepping stone. Or stay right here in your own country and help it get better. That would be the most ideal thing to do. But you can see it's part of the 16 nations that make up the International Space Station. This little movie shows you how it was put together. I think you have to start it. Each piece was brought in the cargo bay of the orbiter. The back of the orbiter is two doors. They open these doors. They put this piece in. goes back up in space. The astronauts put on a spacesuit. They go outside, and they put this together. The part on the top, they're called solar rays. 
They take energy from the sun, they convert it to electricity. That's what's used to power the space station. The part going across here, diagonal, that's a truss. Those of you engineering or like engineering, a truss is something that gives a structure strength. All structures have trusses. The round or cylindrical parts, that's where the astronauts live and stay. And when they go up in space, they stay up there for six months. And while they're up there, they're floating and nothing weighs anything. There's a part that goes on the bottom, it's called cupola. It's an Italian module and it's glass enclosed. And I'm going to show you what it's like to be up in space and look down on the Earth. Whoops. One of the things I like to talk about how important it is for kids and adults to really to understand how important it is to make learning fun. You know, we never stop learning. We learn our whole lives. And one of the things that was so important for me, when I was in school, I hated school and I hated learning. All I wanted to do was play sports. But my twin sister, she loved learning and she made learning fun. So what we used to do when we were going to high school, we would ride a bus to school, we would go to school, we'd get on a bus, we'd come back home, we'd go in our house. She would go in her room and she would turn on music and she would sing and dance to her lessons. And I used to look at her and think, what's wrong with you? You could be outside at the beach. Why are you inside singing and dancing? But she made learning fun. And that's what you all want to do. And we never stop learning. And I don't care what you take in school. I don't care what they teach you in school. When you get a job, you're going to have to learn it by doing it. And the habits you learn in learning as kids or as young adults, you're going to take with you for the rest of your life. So try different things in learning. See what wakes most fun for you and apply it to everything you do. It will make it so much easier. When you have fun learning, it's easier and you remember it longer. For the astronauts, they have to go up in space and they have to build a space station while they're floating. Well, they don't know how to float on Earth. Gravity holds us down everywhere we go. So they have to learn. Hello? <laughs> the same habits they developed as kids they take as an adult to learn how to float, to go up into space. Now we can't float on Earth because gravity holds us down, but we can float in water. So NASA said, okay, let's train our astronauts in water, floating like we do floating in space. But we don't want to float on top of the water because gravity will still affect us. We want to float below the water. So this is called neutral buoyancy. Buoyancy means you float, neutral buoyancy means you don't float, you don't sink. So what they did, they built a big pool in Houston, Texas called a Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory. This pool is about 20 meters deep by 40 meters wide by 50 meters long. And the astronauts go in every day for a year and they tra train in a neutral buoyancy state. And what that means is if we jump on the water, we float on top because we're buoyant. But they put a weight belt proportional to your weight so you go down 10 meters and you stay there. You don't go up, you don't go down. That's called neutral buoyancy. And that's how they train the whole year. This astronaut, he's getting ready to go in the water. Everything is identical to in space. The space suit, everything is the same as in space. This is part of that truss. Remember, that's a big metal piece that gives the structure strength. It would fall to the bottom. So it's propped up in a neutral buoyancy state. This astronaut now, she's getting real in the water. Everywhere she goes, two divers accompany her. In case there's a problem, they can get her right out of the water. Here's something that looks very simple. I have a shop. I build cars. I race cars for hobby. If I want to put a screw in a wall, I use my body strength and torque. It's very simple. But if I'm floating somewhere between the ceiling and the floor, I have no strength and I have no torque. So something as simple as putting a screw in a wall on Earth becomes very complicated in space. One of the most important things for all of us, one of the reasons I love sports is you play as a team. In order to be successful in life or in sports, you have to be a team and you have to learn to work together and help each other out. In America, most adults don't know how to get along. They complain about everything. They complain about their jobs. They complain about the people they work with. All they do is complain. And I had somebody earlier tell me it's similar in Brazil. So we all know what that means. We want to learn to get along and trust each other. For the astronauts, they're almost always in a life-threatening situation. 
so they have to get along. And it's important we all get along and we all learn to help each other out. I always ask, does anybody know what a triathlon is? Can somebody tell me what a triathlon is? Yes, hello? <laughs> anybody know what a triathlon is? Come on. Yes? Yes, what is it? Yes, ah, yes, she knows, yes. What is a triathlon? Biking, yes, excellent. Okay, so a triathlon is a sporting event where you do three different events. You swim, you bike, and you run. How many of you have a BFF, a best friend forever? I have one right in front of me, Angela, <laughs> my BFF, and many of you have a BFF, a best friend forever. I also have another BFF, his name is Randall. And this is Randall. Randall is totally blind. He can't see anything, but Randall can do anything. And I want you all to think about something. From this day, the rest of your life, I don't care where you are, what you're doing, you have a new BFF, his name is Randall, and he's totally blind, and he can do anything. And you can too. Anytime you think you can't do something, Randall is going to say to you, I'm blind, I can do it, so can you. Don't ever think you can't do something. And I'm going to tell you something else. You can never fail. Never. I don't care what you do, you can never fail because you always learn. And when you learn, you become a better and wiser person. So don't ever not try something because you think it might not work. You can only learn from whatever you do and you can never fail. And Randall is going to be right with you and he's going to say, I'm blind, I can do it, so can you. And it was interesting. I was in Brazil at campus party about a year ago when I was doing the same thing. And one of the guys at campus party told me about three months later, you know, I always wanted to do something and because of you, I did it. And this guy was in his 60s. So you can do this at any time. If you think you want to do something, just go do it. You will never fail, and you will always feel good about your effort. Remember those three things. Do your best. Enjoy what you do. Believe in yourself. That's so important. And if you try to do something, just do your best. It doesn't matter what happens. Do your best. Feel good about your effort. It will help you build confidence. If it's not what you want, it's fine. Do it again. Every time you do something and you do your best, you will get better. And I'm going to prove that to you before this is over. So Randall came to me one day and he said, hey, Gabe, I want to do a triathlon. I said, okay, what's a triathlon? He said, we have to swim, bike, and run. And I said, okay, I'm athletic. I can do anything. Let's go do it. But he said, I can't. And I said, why not? He said, I'm blind. But I said, you do everything else. Let's go figure it out. So for the swim, we swim about 750 meters. We put a rope around my waist and a rope around his waist with about a five meter bungee between us. And I have to guide him through the swim. I can't pull him or I'll be exhausted. And I can't let him get ahead of me because we don't know where we're going. So I have to stay ahead of him. The second thing we do, we ride a bike for two, for about 50 kilometers. And we have to pedal together for the last thing, which is a 5K run, which we do at about a 50 centimeter rope. I hold one end, he holds the other end. That's how we do the triathlon. And it's a great, great opportunity. And he does so much to encourage people. So I really want you to remember you got a new BFF, Randall. He's going to go with you. Gabe will be with you too, encouraging you to do whatever you want to do with your life and to have fun doing it. So this astronaut, she's a neutral boy. And she's not going up. She's not going down. She just practiced working on what she's going to do in space. The next thing I'm going to show you, what it's like to live up on the space station. This is a little movie that shows you the astronauts up in space. Now, when you're up in space, there's no gravity. So nothing weighs anything. So you never use muscles. Just on Earth, just walking around, we exercise our legs. Moving our arms, we exercise our muscles. Just the resistance. But when you're up in space, nothing weighs anything. And you're up there for six months. Or if you're going to be on a mission going from a planet to a planet, it may take you six months. If you don't exercise during those six months, you'll come back to Earth and flop on the floor. You won't have any muscular ability. So it's very important they exercise every day between two and three hours. They have a stationary bike, very similar to like what we have on Earth, 
The big difference is it has no seat because you're floating, so there's no need to sit down. They have a treadmill, again, like on Earth, but it's not on a floor. It's on a wall like this, so they're floating above the floor and they're bungeed on this treadmill. And the third thing, it looks like a weight machine. You see them lifting weights, but nothing weighs anything. So it's fluids. They're trying to compress fluids or hydraulics. So when they're lifting like this, they're pressing fluids. That's the resistance to build a muscle. Yep. To start. So you'll see this guy riding a stationary bike. <laughs> And you see his water bottle is just floating beside him. He never has to pick it up. And this guy's got his feet hooked so he doesn't float away. And nothing lifts. Everything floats. Even the crew, they're floating too. And this guy's shaving. He doesn't have to put his razor down. It's just floating beside him. The guy in the back is taking a bath. You can't take a shower or bath, water goes everywhere. So they take a cloth and they wet themselves down. This guy's taking a drink. Instead of putting it in his mouth, he pours it out. All liquids form a ball in space. So he just takes a drink. And everybody sleeps in a sleeping bag. Now you can sleep standing on your head, horizontal, vertical, any position you want. It all feels the same. They sleep in a sleeping station where they're velcroed in so they don't float around and bump into something. To get around, you give yourself a little push and you never stop. And this box, if this box was in this room, all of us put together, we couldn't move it. We couldn't even budget. But in space, it weighs nothing. So she moves it around all by herself. And for the girls or any guys with long hair, you've got to pin it up or be big powder puff all around your face. And they're having a little taco break. Now, there's no chairs in space. They're all floating around this table, and they're having a little taco break. They always have fun. Everything they're doing involves having fun. Ah, there's E.T. Everybody says, where does E.T. come from? Now you know. So how many of you think it might be fun to go up and hang out on the space station for a while? I raised my hand. I would love to go up in space. So I hope some of you will think about that in the future and have an opportunity to do that. The next thing I want to show you, what it's like to be up in space and look down on the Earth. Might have started. So at the bottom of the space station is a module called cupola. It's got a great big glass dome in it. This is looking out at the Earth from the cupola module. You see how all of the continents are lit up. The astronauts like to look down on the Earth and see the continents. You see the huge electrical storms. This greenish layer across the top is called the ionosphere. It separates our, atmos our, our atmosphere from space. Remember, every 90 minutes they go around one time. They're going 26,000 kilometers per hour around the Earth. And they see the sunrise 16 times every day while we only see it once. Those are the northern lights. 
The northern lights happen when solar storms come from the sun. They come with electrons and they bounce off of Earth's atmosphere and they give us those pretty lights. Our atmosphere is oxygen and nitrogen. And when they come with elements, they hit oxygen or nitrogen. They can be green or yellow, red or blue or purple, depending on the altitude and depending on whether it's oxygen or nitrogen. So I, I, I'm in Florida, Kennedy Space Center is Florida. The astronauts live and work in Houston, Texas, but they come to Kennedy for a launch and we get to hang out with them for a couple of weeks. Then they go up to space for six months, they come back down, we get to hang out with them again. And when you say to the astronauts, every single one of them, you're up in space for six months, what was your favorite thing to do? Every single one, no matter how many times they've been in space or what they do, they all say the same thing. They love looking out the window. They love looking down on the earth or they love looking at the solar system. From up in space, it's so magical. Oops. We also have a solar flare. A solar storm comes from the sun with electrons and it gives us the aurora borealis or the northern lights. But a solar flare comes with ions, protons and electrons. And when it hits our atmosphere, can you imagine looking up at the sky at night Instead of seeing a black sky, you would see a sky with all those multitudes of colors all dancing around. And scientists track solar flares. So if you're anywhere and you hear about a solar flare coming to the Earth, try to go and see it because you would see something super magical. The future of the space program involves going to Mars. So why do you want to go to Mars? What's the fascination with Mars? Well, scientists believe that billions of years ago that Mars was a lot like Earth, that it had oceans and lakes and rivers. They even think it had an environment like Earth. So they think something may have been on, alive on Mars billions of years ago or may still be alive today. So if you look at the two planets, they're what's called similar. I know many of you had geometry and geometry you study similar triangles. What that means is they look alike but they're different. It's the same with Earth and Mars. So if you look at Earth and you look at Mars, Mars is about one half the size of Earth. Now our planet Earth is spinning at 1,600 kilometers per hour. It takes 24 hours to go around one time, that's called a day. Mars is spinning at about 800 kilometers per hour. It takes 24 hours and 37 minutes to go around one time, that's called a soul. And they're both tilted at the same axis. So I'm going to tell you something else about Earth and about Mars. First thing I want you to know, they are both round. Some people are going to tell you in your life the Earth is flat. If somebody tells you the Earth is flat, all you do is say yes and walk away. Don't waste your time trying to talk to them. Don't waste your time arguing. They just want to argue. But if somebody says the Earth is flat, say yes and walk away and don't ever talk to them again. They're wasting your time. But you can see they're around. Say, okay, let's jump on a ship. Let's go to Mars. It's not quite that simple. There's something called opposition. What opposition means, if you're here in this city and you want to go to another city, you drive from one place to another. Nothing moves. But with opposition, things are moving. So the Earth is spinning at 1,600 kilometers per hour. It's going around the sun at 110,000 kilometers per hour. We don't feel it because it's so big, but our planet is actually going around the sun at 110,000 kilometers per hour. It takes 365 days for Earth to go around the sun one time. That's called a year. Now, I'm not into astronomy, but I have a lot of friends who like astronomy. And if you like astronomy, instead of saying to somebody, happy birthday, you can say to them, I wish you a happy trip around the sun, which I think is a real cute way of saying happy birthday. Mars is going, remember Mars is spinning at 800 kilometers per hour. 
It's going 86,000 kilometers per hour around the sun. It takes 687 days for Mars to go around the sun. So you have the Earth spinning, Mars spinning, both of them going around the sun, different speeds, different orbits. You want to launch something from Earth and have it land on Mars almost 500 million kilometers away. It's pretty tricky, but they've kind of got it down pretty good. So this is a little rover. This rover is called Spirit. This rover weighs about 200 kilos, and it was sent to Mars to look for water. Now remember those three things I talked to you about. Do your best, enjoy what you do, and believe in yourself. So I want to prove something to you. I'm going to ask you to do something. I just want you to do your best. It doesn't matter how it comes out, just try to do your best. So when we're at the Space Center, remember I told you I was going to ask you all to come to Florida with me, and we're going to go hang out at the beach, and we're going to watch a launch. So what happens when we're at the Space Center? Well, I'm a civil structural engineer. Many of you work in an office. So we're working in this office, and we hear an announcement over a public address system. It says there's going to be a launch in 30 minutes. So we all put our stuff down, and we go out to the beach. Now, we're being paid really good money to be an engineer, yet we go hang out at the beach to watch the launch. It's amazing, and it's so much fun. Once we're at the beach, we hear what's called the Launch Control Center, where there are engineers monitoring the different systems on a rocket, and they're talking to a launch director, and we hear everything that's going on. We hear each engineer talking to the launch director, saying their system is good. And when every engineer says the system is good, the launch director says, go for launch. And they count down, 10, 9, 8. And we all count down with it. We do this every single launch. We're at the beach, we're catching rays out in the sunshine. It's so much fun. It's part of the magic of being at the Space Center. So I want to show you this launch. This launch is a Delta rocket, and it's got nine boosters. And you're going to hear the engineers talking to the launch director. And then you're going to hear them counting down. When they count down, I want you to count down with it. We do this all the time. We count down, we zero, we jump up and down, we have so much fun. I want to share that with you, and I want you to do it. So just remember, when they count down, just do your best. So this comes from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. That's Mars, 500 million kilometers from Earth. Now the rover's in this nose cone, it weighs about 200 kilos. Can you turn it up? Now you'll hear the launch engineers talking to the launch director. 35. Let guys go. Hydraulics go. You see pressurized vehicle locks tank. Pressurizing. SSC hydraulic pump control on. On. CLCDR pad B deck flush on. On. T minus 10. Count down with it. Nine. Eight. eight seven. seven. Come on. Six, louder. Five. We're at the beach. We're jumping four, up down, having fun. Three. Louder. Two, louder. Safe blast off and everybody off. clap. The Come Delta on. Clap. With the Mars Exploration <laughs> Rover. Awesome. Program response is good. So you're going to see when it gets to a certain speed and certain altitude, the boosters will start coming off. They call Earth the pretty blue planet because of all the water. So you're going to see a lot of different pieces on this mission. Each piece has a function. Some are for navigation to keep it going in the right direction. And some are for propulsion to keep it going at the right speed. It's got to overcome all of those variables of the planet spinning and going around the sun. <coughs> Sorry. You see when it goes by the sun, you see the sun and all the billions of stars in our solar system. Can anybody guess? Can anybody tell me how long does it take to get to Mars? Seven months. How'd you know that? Always up there. 
Okay. <laughs> so anytime it goes to an atmosphere, it generates a lot of heat. It has to have a heat shield to protect it. If it didn't have a heat shield, it would just burn up. So it's going very fast. It's going about 3,000 kilometers per hour. A parachute opens to slow it down. Then the heat shield will fall away. This rover is called Spirit. It's in an inflatable canister. <coughs> and it's got a hundred meter long rope. When it gets fully extended, it will inflate. It's still going very fast, so they fire some rockets to slow it down. At about 50 meters above the surface, they just let it go. And it bounces and rolls and bounces and rolls. Remember, it went 500 million kilometers. It took seven months to get there. It's very fragile, and that's how it landed. Everything had to work perfectly. So it's counterbalanced, so when it stops, it will be on its wheels. <coughs> and it deflates. The first thing happens, solar panels unfold. They take energy from the sun, they convert it to electricity. That's what's used to power the rover. Then that's a TV camera. It takes pictures and sends it back to Earth. Now this is computer generated. It shows it cruising around Mars. But it really goes about seven meters and it stops. And it sends a signal back to Pasadena where a geologist will analyze it and tell it what to do for the next seven meters. So it was sent to Mars to look for water because scientists believe if water exists, life exists in one form or another. And they found a lot of water on Mars. So what it does, it will come up on a rock and it will drill a hole in a rock and look inside. And the geologist will analyze that and say if water was present when it was formed. So that picture is analyzed, and then a geologist says what to do for the next session. Oops. So this is another rover. Now this rover is called Curiosity, and it's much, much different than Spirit. This weighs a thousand kilos, and it's nuclear powered, and it's got a really cool laser. It can shoot a laser at a rock and blow the rock apart and analyze what's inside of it. And if it likes what it sees, it has a drill. It can drill a hole in a rock, take a sample, and in the back, analyze it. Now, I want to show you how this landed on Mars, not how it got there. But I want to prove something to you. Remember those three things. Do your best, enjoy what you do, and believe in yourself. So you just counted down, and you did your best. And you did really well, but something you probably never did before. So I'm going to ask you to do it again, and I'm going to ask you to do your best you will get better. It's very simple because we learn and apply it to everything you do. If you want to do something, to challenge yourself to do your best and see how well you do. It doesn't matter what happens. Feel good about your effort. If it's not what you want, simply do it again and keep doing it till you get what you want. But always feel good about your effort. So this is an Atlas rocket and it's going to count down. Count down with it just like you did last time. Just try to do better. And I'm telling you, we do this at every launch. And some of you may watch the SpaceX launches on your TV or video, and you will hear the people. You may not have heard them before, but you will always hear the people counting down with it because everybody does this at every launch. It's part of the fun of going to a launch. And I want you to experience that. So when you hear it counting down... T minus 10. All right, come on. Nine. Eight, Eight, seven, seven six, louder! Come five, on, louder! Jump up four, and down. We're gonna see a launch. Two, one. Say blast Main off, and everybody start. clap! Come on, Zero. clap! And <laughs> lift off of the Atlas V with curiosity, seeking yes. clues Excellent. to a planetary puzzle about life on Mars.
So I want to show you how it landed. You know how it got there, but I want to show you how it landed. So you're going to see when it goes through the atmosphere, it has steering rockets, so it goes through at the perfect angle. It doesn't risk burning up. when it goes through the atmosphere <coughs> same thing a parachute will open up to slow it down but with curiosity when the heat shield falls away curiosity has its own propulsion system flies around Mars looking for a landing site and then it's called a sky crane it will lower it down And it's on Mars right now, and it's actually looking for life, looking for a landing site for astronauts in the future. If you would like to see what this is doing, if there are any teachers in here, or anybody who's just interested in this stuff, you can actually go to the NASA website, nasa.gov. In the search engine, put curiosity. It's sending live pictures back from Mars, and you can actually see what it's doing real time. It's about a six minute delay, it takes that long for the signal to get to Earth, but you can actually see what it's doing. And there's something happening next year that's really kind of special for anybody in the audience who really likes this stuff. Next year, there's a rover called Mars 2020, and it looks a lot like Curiosity. It's going in July of next year, and NASA has the ability for you to put your name on a microchip that's going to Mars. So in order to do that, all you have to do, again, is go to the NASA website, nasa.gov, and put in Mars 2020. And it will say, send your name to Mars. Click on that, it will ask you for your name and your country. You put that information in, and it will print you a boarding pass, a real pretty boarding pass that has your name on it. Some of you have done this before, we talked about it earlier. So you can do that, remember just go to NAS, nasa.gov, Mars 2020, send your name to Mars. It'll ask you if your name and your country, you put that in there, you can print a real nice boarding pass. Now this mission is being built in Pasadena, California. And if you'd like to see what it's doing, for those of you who might like robotics, they actually have a live feed from Pasadena watching this thing being built every day. It's on YouTube, just YouTube C2020 Rover Construction. And you can see the engineers putting this thing together every day. In about, probably about June next year, they will send it to Florida. You can watch it come to Florida. You can watch it launch, and your name will be going to Mars, and it will land on Mars when it lands on Mars. It's a pretty cool thing to do. It's free, and it's something that makes the space program, especially if there's any teachers or any of you would like to share this stuff with your kids. It's a great, really a great thing to do. So this is what scientists believe Mars looked like billions of years ago. They think it was a lot like Earth, that it had oceans and lakes and rivers, and it even had an environment like Earth. That's why they think something may have been alive at one time, or may be alive today. So 
So for the longest time they thought, well, what happened to Mars? They thought a great big meteorite crashed through Mars' atmosphere and put a hole in it and it all escaped. But about a year ago they came up with another theory. The solar storms and solar flares that come from the sun and give the Earth those pretty lights. Our planet has a strong magnetic field that protects it. So we but Mars has a weak magnetic field. So they think as these solar storms and solar flares were coming from the sun, when they hit Mars' atmosphere, as it was rotating over billions of years, it eroded away to what it is today. So this looks like a NASA shirt, but it's actually a shirt that was given to me by a group of third graders. They were eight years old, and they were in Africa. So remember those three things I talked about. It's so important. Do your best, enjoy what you do, and believe in yourself. Well, doing your best is easy. You just do your best, and you try to get better. But always feel good about your effort. It will give you confidence. And you need confidence in order to be successful. Enjoy everything you do. People will say to you, find something you like to do, and you will enjoy it. But I challenge you, enjoy everything you can do. You can find good in anything if you choose to look for it, or you can find negative in anything. Find good in everything you do, and you'll always enjoy yourself. You'll always be happy. And the most important and the most challenging is believing in yourself. Very few people believe in themselves. Most people who bully others, they have no confidence. They try to make others look bad by building themselves up. People who talk bad about others, they have no confidence in themselves. So they talk bad about others to build themselves up. You've got to develop that belief in yourself. And how do you do that? You do that by going slow. Whatever you do, go slow. We talk about dreams. The name of the shirt, the name of the school in Africa is Laker School Anton Van Wow, and the bottom says live your dream. Because I talk a lot about dreams and how important it is to have dreams. And if you have a dream, write it down and say this is my goal. And ask yourself, what steps do I take to achieve it? And then just go do it but take small steps. The smaller step you take, the easier it is to accomplish. The easier it is to accomplish, the more confidence you get. The more confidence you get, the easier it becomes. And you build and you build and you build and one day you say to yourself, I can do anything. And you have no stress, you have no pressure, you never work. But it's all about going slow and developing that belief in yourself. It's so important. Your life will be directly proportional as to how you believe in yourself. And if you have a strong belief in yourself, you think you can do anything. You never stress, you never have pressure. Your life should be fun. And I don't care where you are in your life, what position in your life. You want to train yourself to think this way. It's 100% mental. It's not physical, it's all mental. It's something you constantly think about every day. Remember those three things. Do your best, enjoy what you do, and believe in yourself. It's simple, and it's the key to such a happy life. And the reason I do this, I really want you all to have a happy life. I live this way. Nobody taught me. I just kind of learned it. I don't get paid to do this. I do it for the joy of trying to share with you how much fun life should be, and it should be fun. So I was writing to these kids in Africa, just like I'm talking to you, I was talking about live your dream. So they were, third, they were in the third grade, they were eight years old, and they decided their dream was to come to America. So the girls went out and did fashion shows, the boys did car washes, and they raised enough money to come to America. When they came to America, to Florida, I got to hang out with them for a couple of weeks. And it was so much fun. We really lucked out. We even got on a bus, and we went to the Space Center, and we saw a launch from five kilometers away. So everything worked out perfect. At the end of two weeks, they said, hey, Gabe, we came to America, we want you to come to Africa. Well, my first thought is, why would I go to Africa? It's so far away, and what am I going to do when I get there? But it's very, very important to me. I write to a lot of kids. I have came to Brazil in, in August because a girl wrote to me on Facebook, private messaged me, and said, will you come to my university? And it just so happened I was able to do it. So I write to a lot of kids on Facebook. If any of you want to write to me on Facebook or contact me on Facebook, it's Space Talk Gabe. You write to me, I give you my word, I will write back. 
It's very important. If you have something you want to talk to me about, I will talk to you. I can accept friend requests. I've maxed out at 5,000. But you can follow me and you can private message me if it's something you think you'd like to do. So I said to the kids, okay, I'll go to Africa. And when I went to Africa, I got to live a dream of mine that I never thought would happen. And I only share this with you because I want you to know, never give up on your dreams. They can happen when you least expect them. So this was a dream I had as a little kid, and it happened about three years ago. So I want to share with you how my dream came true. So this is actually South Africa. The kids all wear uniforms. They're still segregated. The schools are beginning to integrate. Some are all black and some are white, but they are beginning to integrate. This happened to be at a, a white school. Just like I'm talking to you, and it's amazing. I really appreciate you all coming out here. It always amazes me when I come to campus party. How many people come to hear me talk? I don't consider myself a public speaker. You know, I'm just a guy with a cool job in a cool place. Yet everybody wants to know about it, and I love sharing it. So I thank you for coming out. It's so much fun for me. So I was talking about these kids. Uh, this, all of the classrooms made signs. This was a fifth grade class. I just thought it was a cute sign. And these were the third graders. When I went in their classroom, they made space costumes. So we all wore our space costumes. I send a lot of stuff to schools. I was at schools here the last few days. I dropped a few things off. I try to always think, leave something at a school so they can remember what we talked about when I was there. My favorite thing to do when I go to schools or when I come here is to hang out with you. So after we're done, I think they will set up something. If you want to take, ask questions, if you want to take pictures, whatever you want to do, I will do. And I will stay here as long as you want me to stay here to take pictures. Anything you want me to do, I will stay as long as you like. It's so important to me. And I want to say something to all of you about your English. I know I come to Brazil so many times and so many people say to me in English, I don't speak English, but you just did. And I promise you, your English is much better than you think. And I'm in Brazil. I should speak Portuguese. So I feel badly that I don't do that. But I appreciate any English you speak. I will never be critical. I always think if my English was, as my Portuguese was as good as your English, I would be so happy. I would feel great. So please, if you have a question, ask me in English the best you can. We'll figure it out. There will be a way to figure it out. But I will say my favorite thing is hanging out with you, and I'd love for you to talk to me. So I got to do something kind of fun. This was a little elephant. Now this elephant was about four months old. It was just like a puppy. All it wanted to do was play, and it was so much fun to play with this elephant. I got to do something cool. I got to ride an elephant. Now, you see an elephant in the movies or TV, they're big. But in Africa, they're huge. So I had to climb up a flight of stairs, get on a platform, climb up on another flight of stairs, get on this elephant. You're going side to side, back and forth. I love going fast. And you say they don't go fast, but it was really a fun ride. So this is my dream. I'm a cat lover. And when I was in Africa, I wanted to play with baby lions. So everywhere I went, I said, can I play with a lion? How can I play with a lion? And I lucked out, and I played with four little lion cubs. Now, these lions were two months old, and they're just like kittens. If you've ever played with a kitten, you know it purrs and it bites, it jumps around. It's so much fun to play with a little kitten. But the little kitten is this big. This lion was two months old, and it weighed about 20 kilos. And it had very big paws, super sharp teeth, and it was very strong. So I was on the ground, I was playing with these little lions, but they were really playing with me. They would drag me one place, I would jump on them, they would jump on me. It was so much fun. Can you imagine playing with a kitten that weighs 20 kilos? But they have super sharp claws and super sharp teeth, and they're very strong. So if a little kitten bites you, you just open its mouth and go about your business. But when this lion bit you, you could not open its mouth, it was that strong. So I have a few scars, but it was amazing. It was the most fun thing I've ever done. So never give up on your dreams. They can happen when you least expect them. 
I do this with my cats at home. I tried it with a lion. It was just a lot of fun. So we only have a couple more things, and then whatever time we have to do, whatever anybody wants to do, we'll try to do. A lot of times they'll set up a place to take pictures. I'm not sure what they're going to do, but I'm sure they'll figure something out. We can do that after that. The last two things I'm going to talk to you about, something called SLS, Space Launch System. This is a system that's being developed right now to take astronauts to Mars. And it's going to be 20 or 25 years before people go to Mars. Now, we could probably go to Mars tomorrow and come back. The problem is, if you go to Mars, you have to stay there for 23 months because of the way the planets are going around the sun. You launch when they're here, they're close together, you land, then they're going further apart. You have to stay 23 months before you can come back. And this is the challenge. Mars's atmosphere is very, very hostile to us. We can't breathe it. We can't drink the water. The atmosphere is thin. Humidity, uh, uh, radiation is very strong. And the weather is terrible. So there's no way for us to really survive in this environment without doing a lot of things to prepare to do it. So that's why it's going to be 20 or 25 years. But they have the capsule. The name of the capsule is Orion. And the ship is called SLS Space Launch Systems. Now they're developing the ship right now and they're doing testing. But I want to show you something. Remember, we counted down twice. I ask you just do your best. Try to do better. So you counted down twice. We're going to count down again and try to do better. Just try to do your best. Try to do better than you did last time. I promise you, if you did your best and you do your best again, you will get better. And it applies to everything you do. So you're going to see a countdown clock. I think it starts at 16 or 15. So jump in, count down with it, have some fun, we're out at the beach, we're catching some rays, we're going to see a launch. We're so excited, we want to see this launch. Count down, 15, 14, come on, louder, can't hear you, come on. Okay, stop, 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 stop. The future is on the horizon. Okay, go, four. Three, two, okay, stop, stop, stop. How will we take the next step? Okay, go, jump up and down, clap, come on, have some journey starts with a great ship. The Space Launch System, or SLS, will allow explorers to make greater discoveries than ever imagined. Yes, if we have time. SLS will take us further than Apollo, carry more than the space shuttle, and enable unfathomable scientific breakthroughs. SLS stands on the shoulders of legacy systems and is teaming with industry, other government agencies, and academia to build the largest and most capable rocket in history. Cost-effective and efficiently designed, SLS will demonstrate new technology, foster innovation, and be the engineering marvel of our generation. Production of SLS is happening right now. Boosters are being built, engines are being tested, manufacturing has begun. The Space Launch System is an extraordinary undertaking in America's long and storied history of unthinkable human accomplishments. launch system will lead the way. So this is being developed right now. Uh, again, it'll be 20 or 25 years, I believe, before astronauts 
actually go to space. They may go co with commercial companies. A lot of people ask me about SpaceX. Is it direct competition with NASA? But in reality, SpaceX and NASA are working very closely together. NASA likes the input from the commercial companies. And it may be a commercial company that goes before NASA. But it's going to be probably 20, 25 years because people have to figure out how to survive on Mars for two years. So the last thing I want to talk to you about, and it's probably something that, that it amazes me. I've been to about 13 countries doing this. I've been all over the world. I've been to Brazil 14 times. I've been to Singapore. I've been to so many different countries. And I do this with kids from four years old through adults. And I always get asked the same question. It doesn't matter what country I'm in. It doesn't matter age of the people. I always get asked the same question. Hey, Gabe, I'm up in space. I got to go to the bathroom. How do you go to the bathroom in space? So this is a Canadian astronaut. He's been up on the space station. He's going to tell you how you go to the bathroom in space. When you go to the bathroom on Earth, you're relying on gravity <laughs> pretty, pretty heavily. Imagine if you were halfway done and somebody shut off gravity, it would be a mess. And you'd float off the toilet. So, so when, we, when we designed our space toilet, first it has to have a seat belt on it to hold you down. And then we decided to separate solids and liquids because they're easier to store that way. So we just have a tube that you pee into and it has air pulled into the tube, so it's not a big deal. For the women, there's a cup fits up against them. For the guys, it's just like a little funnel. You just pee into this tube, and it goes into a, into a sewage tank. But the solids that come out of your body, that's a harder problem to solve, and it's an important medical one, because on Earth, everything falls on the floor, but in space, it's going to float around. So, so it, it'll really make you sick. If you re-ingest something that came out of your body, it will really make you sick. And we can't afford to get that sick. So we designed a toilet that instead of gravity pulling everything into the toilet, it has air flow. There's air pulled down into the toilet. Sort of windy when you're sitting there, but it pulls everything out of your body. Everything that comes out of your body gets pulled down into the toilet by the air. And then in the storage tank, we just expose that to the vacuum of space, so it basically just freeze dries everything, so it kills all the bacteria, so that there's no smell, and then that, that, we just store it. And then when you have a whole bunch of it stored, we put it in a little unmanned supply ship, and we undock it, and it burns up in the atmosphere. So the next time you see a beautiful shooting star going across the sky, <laughs> that's what it might be. So, it's really, really important I tell you something about this movie because I get asked about this movie all the time. And, and I get thousands of letters from kids. I read every letter. I save every letter. I actually have a great big box where I put all those letters in. And I say, when I die, the box is going with me. I never throw anything out that kids give to me. But they all talk about this movie. And they say, I'm never wishing on a star again. It's gross, it's poop, never going to happen. But this is a comical way of talking about space. You really can't see that ship. And it's so important. We're all taught from the time we're little kids our whole life to wish on stars. And we all do that. So the next time, I don't care where you are, what you're doing, you see a star, make your wish. Go home, write it down, and say, this is my goal and ask yourself, how do I achieve it? Your wishes can come true, your dreams can come true, it's not difficult. And remember, go slow. You gotta have that belief in yourself. The stronger the belief you have in yourself, the easier your life will be. And you get that by going slow with everything you do. And something people don't realize, the slower you go, the faster you will get there. Well, you say, how is that possible? It's very simple. If you go fast, you stress yourself, you pressure on yourself, you have no fun, you're miserable, time goes slow. If you go slow, you enjoy what you do, you're having fun, time goes fast. So just remember those three things. Do your best, enjoy what you do, and believe in yourself. Life should be fun, and it can be fun for all of us. 
I live this way. I'm a burger flipper. Somehow ended up at NASA. If I can do it, so can you. <laughs> when you go to the bathroom, I'm... <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we're almost done. Thank you so much. We're almost done. Uh, what, people say, why do you waste your money going in space? We could use your money for so much better things. But what happens is something called a spin-off. A spin-off are things that develop in space that help us on Earth. So many medical breakthroughs are done in space. You know, up on the space station, it's like a laboratory, but it's in a sterile environment. So experiments come out much better. So they've done a lot of medical breakthroughs in space that help us on Earth. All of our cell phones, all of our laptop computers, most of the electronics that we take for granted were all developed in the space program and help us on Earth. MRIs, if you have an injury, you get an MRI. I'm always beating myself up playing sports. I get a lot of MRIs. MRIs were developed in the space program. They help us on Earth. So I always say anybody can be an astronaut. For any of you who think you might want to be an astronaut, I really encourage you to do that. You have nothing to lose by trying. And even if you don't make it, you'll have such a great education. You can do almost anything you want. So try to become an astronaut if it's something you think you'd like. Most of the astronauts are around 40 years old, so you have plenty of time, most of you, to get there if it's something you think you'd want to do. So this concludes the presentation, but before you do anything else, I'd like to take some pictures of you. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start over here. I'm going to say three, two, one, and I want you to yell out space. So I'll maybe take five or six across. Can you turn the lights on out there? And then, and then after that, we'll have time for questions or anything you want. Okay, so you ready? Three, two, one. Awesome, very good. Three, two, one. Eh. <laughs> Come on, jump up and down, have some fun. Three, two, one. Awesome, that was much better. Okay, let's go some more. You ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, come on, a couple more. Get excited, jump up and down, have some fun. Ready? Three, two, one. Yeah. Awesome, one more. Three, two, one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I want to say to you all, muy obrigado, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you all so much. I can't thank you enough. Yes. So we're going to have, we have time for three questions. We have time for three questions, and then I think they're going to set something up over here if you want to take pictures or anything you want to do. So we'll try to answer three questions first. Anybody have questions? Uh, so, hey, um, what do you think uh, you were your big, were your most important learn? Uh, let me start again. Say that. Uh, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Just say that again, please. What was your biggest, uh, your most important learning uh, through all your time, uh, through all those years in NASA? Uh, well, for me, I guess just learning to have fun. You know, when I was in high school, I did terrible. But when I got out of high school, I started learning to have fun. And I carried through everything I did. And for me, at NASA, the best thing are the shuttle launches. I love the shuttle launches. But every day, I just have fun and I enjoy it. That's the biggest lesson I learned. And I live that way. And I hope you will, too. As long as you want. I will stay there as long as you want. Yes. Excuse me. Hey, uh, I have a quick question. Yes. Uh, what's your personal stance on extra intelligent extraterrestrial life? Uh, my personal stance, I believe personally there's life out there. Yeah. There has to be. There's thousands of galaxies, thousands and thousands of planets. How can there not be something somewhere else? I personally don't think it's come to Earth. No. I don't believe it's come to Earth. Some people do, and for those that do, I don't criticize them. But I don't think it's come to Earth. I think if it had come to Earth, we would know. Yeah. But some people say they were walking along a ship, something up, they went in a spaceship, they were examined and brought back down. 
I don't, you, I don't say no, you're wrong, but I don't believe that. But I do believe in life. Yes. yes. Hola. <laughs> Hi, Gabe. Hi. First of all, thank you very much for your greatness uh, and for your posit Thank you very much for your positivity and your speech. It's a great, po it's, it's a great speech. Uh, and I have a political question for you. Is a problem? Uh, I, I try to stay away from all politics in my country and other countries. Uh, you can ask the question. I, I, I try to stay away from all of that stuff because I ha can't control it. In my country, when it's time for me to vote, I vote. The rest of the time, I ignore it because it's mainly negative, and I don't allow negative in my life. But it's a positive way, because I, I know you're a positive guy, and I okay. think yeah, ask that the question. way. Uh, I, I think, for example, uh, as you in a third, third country like us, we are in a third, third I, country. I don't consider Brazil a third country. But uh, we still have. Yeah, but no, thank you, I but thank you for that. Thank I, you for I that. do not, no. What, what I do, and, and like you, uh, when you go to South Africa, did you, did you go to the North Africa and the, the part of the, the port, I went the to port one? I went to Pretoria and to Cape Town in South Cape Africa, Town. Okay. which are pretty modern places. It was almost like being in America. Okay. And what do you think, uh, in, in, your, in your opinion, we need to do here to, to, came, to, to become like, like, you, like you did? do the same job that you did in the NASA here in Brazil? Well, I think, again, to me, the biggest thing you want to do is support your Brazilian space agency. The Brazilian space agency is beginning to grow again. It recently signed an agreement with America. So the Brazilian age space agency is beginning to grow. And I encourage everybody in Brazil to support your space agency, to get involved in your country. Everybody wants to come to NASA. You've got a space agency here support it. Many of you will be growing up and getting involved in politics. When you get involved, push the government to push the space program. You can do it internally, and I encourage you to do that. Thank you very much. Less, less of all, but not more, more less important. Can we, can we exchange our shirts? <laughs> Is that possible? Uh, you know what? I want to tell you all something. I was kind of surprised. I know today is Brazil's Independence Day, and I thought it was a big occasion. So I wore a red, white, and blue shirt because of America's independence to help you celebrate your Independence Day. I think it's amazing for me to be in Brazil and share this with you. But I'm told it's not such a big deal here. But for me, it's special that you have an Independence Day. And I really appreciate that you have it. And so I wore this shirt, just the red, white, and blue, to help you celebrate your Independence Day. But it probably won't fit you. You're a little bigger. Thank you very much, man. Yes.